So moleskin notebooks are very popular, but I find that getting the right pen for them can be a real challenge. So in this video, I wanted to run through some of my favorite moleskin pens. And this is just a standard moleskin ruled notebook. You'll note that it has 240 pages of acid-free paper. So it's not a very big notebook. So it really crams in those pages. Also it's acid-free, which means it's kind of archival and you want to hold on to these for a while. And it's not that cheap. So what that means to me is that you want to be able to write on both sides of the paper. The company doesn't say a lot about the paper. We can guess it's maybe 70 or 80 pounds, uh, grams per square meter. It's relatively smooth, but not super smooth. It doesn't appear to be coated. Uh, anyway, that doesn't really help us too much, but I just wanted to sort of triangulate on what we're looking for from a pen. And I've been writing in this one for a little bit. I bought this one brand new specifically for testing. I've had many of these in the past, but basically I found out there are three rules for me. Uh, one, you want something that is not too big. And that's just because this ruling here is maybe uh, seven millimeters, right? Six, seven, whatever it is. It's just, it's not very wide. So unless you are very adept at writing finely, you need something that's not too broad. That means something like, uh, I have it right here, <laughs> something like this, which might seem like a good option, a Uniball Signo broad, the 153, is just not going to work because it's just a little bit overwhelming within those lines. Uh, similarly, even this fountain pen nib, this is a Lamy Extra Fine, does not really work. You can get a fountain pen that might be okay, but you're really looking at a Japanese Extra Fine. Next, we want something that's not putting down too much ink. So this is gonna be not too much ink because what happens here, we can see this with that Lamy Extra Fine, is that the ink will start to bleed through. This paper is not very resistant. It's absorbent, but not water, not ink resistant, uh, which is nice because that means it'll dry on the quick side, but you'll see things like this where ink is coming through, even if you're not writing and you do not. And here you'll see what happens with a marker. That's just uh, some lines from a Sharpie. They'll bleed through very distinctly. Third rule for me is not too pointy. So the paper is not too thick, right? And structurally, it doesn't seem to be too strong either. So as you're writing, some tips will come through more. And that'll be partially a function of how much pressure is applied to the paper, partially the shape of the writing tip. So something like a needle point, see if we can get a focus, a needle point on this Pilot G-Tech will tend to poke through more than something that is a little bit more conical, you know, depending on the size of the ball at the end and a few other factors. You know, obviously you are writing just with the ball, so it won't really matter entirely what the uh, nib looks like or the writing tip looks like, but some are definitely gonna be pointier and scratchier than others. So you wanna be careful which one you use because again, I would say that that raised lettering is definitely a defect and something we wanna avoid as we're choosing the ideal pens for your moleskin. So I have a bunch of possibles here and these are the ones that I thought would be good and uh, I've tested them out and we'll kind of run through them Obviously I've weeded through hundreds, if not thousands of pens, and this is kind of the short list. And we'll get rid of like a Signo Bold, we'll get rid of that Lamy fountain pen, uh, just not great fits. And again, we're looking for stuff that's not too big, not too much ink, not too pointy. So one of the ones that I thought was surprisingly good was this Bic Crystal Ultra Fine. This is a traditional ballpoint, but this is a sort of pointier tip, it's a 0.7 millimeter. And this one did fairly well in my testing. You'd see it writes nicely, not too big, not too small. And then 
uh, barely raised at all. So pretty nice here. Definitely you could feel it a little bit, but I didn't find it to be too distinctive as it came through. And you, what you have to keep in mind is right here, it doesn't look bad, but imagine a whole page with that raised lettering like this. It's blank except for all this. That, that's really, to me, distracting and problematic. So Bic Ultra Fine, not bad. With Moleskins, I tend to prefer a lighter gel pen. So I think the Signo 0.38 millimeter is really a nice option to me. So something like this, which is not generally my favorite, but this one writes really nicely. I think this is a great option. This is the Uniball Signo 0.38 millimeter. And this comes in uh, 0.5 and obviously 1.0, which is the one we tossed out already. But I would definitely recommend the Signo. I think that's a great option. You can see, writes nicely. There it is. Writes nicely and show through raised lettering, really limited. If you use a darker color, uh, that easy, that doesn't even shine through or come through so much either. And this is the other one. This is a Uniball Signo DX, uh, also known as the UM, uh, UM151. These are both really great options for me. Pilot High Tech C is generally a good idea as well. It's another great classic gel pen, but these ones vary a lot. So you have to be careful what you buy. Uh, they come in 0 0.38, 0 0.25, one, uh, no one that, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, a couple different sizes. Some are really wet when they're writing and some aren't. That just varies on how old they are and kind of the condition of the writing tip, which the tip is pretty sensitive on these. So this is gonna vary a lot. This is a pilot, uh, this is the high tech. This is the 0.5 millimeter. This is definitely on the wetter side. You can see what that looks like, the lower one. Kind of not really coming through so much. You can see it, but you can barely feel it. Uh, that for me, I think is definitely a win. Some of the other ones are going to be really scratchy. You see this one, look how much wetter this is. This is a also a Pilot 0.5 millimeter. This is a high tech C. And this one is like, it's called the G Tech, but it's the same pen. And it might be hard to tell, but the bottom one definitely is more distinctive here because it put down a fair bit more ink. But being a gel, it kind of got absorbed and it wasn't enough to overwhelm the paper. So this to me is a win. So basically, this is a worst case scenario with a high tech C and it was still very good. What you don't want to do is go to a 0.25 millimeter where you're really going to have to push down and it's really going to show through on the paper. On the skinnier side, a pen that I think does fairly well is the uh, Juice Up, also a Pilot, also a gel. So this is a Pilot. Writes really nicely here, no problems with the lines. Well, there wouldn't be if I wasn't writing so quickly. This one has a kind of a pointier tip, so it's more raised here. And you can even see when you look at the tip, it's a sharper looking design. Uh, again, you are just writing with the ball, but different balls react differently with the paper. And uh, you could see more or less show through here. So this one is, is okay. I don't think it's as good, but it's a fine option. Some other options are the uh, Acro and the Jetstream. So Acro is Pilot's version to the Jetstream. Jetstream is a good hybrid ballpoint type ink. These ones are pretty good on this. I like the Jetstream because it is a hybrid, which means it kind of sits on the paper more and you could write a little bit lightly, more lightly to this than you can a traditional ballpoint. So it tends to have a little bit more show through even though uh, a little bit more raised, even though I'm writing lightly, but very, like very much in the acceptable range for me. It's definitely one of the better ones, and I like writing with the jet streams. I just think it's a nice pen, a very quick drying as well, which is nice, because you don't want any smearing on this. The Pilot Acro, this is a nice option as well. 
That was, that was a uniball jet stream. I don't know why I said pilot. This is the pilot acro. This is also a 0.5 millimeter. It feels a little bit wetter to me, the pilots. And it feels a little bit wider, which means a little bit less pressure, but still some texture. Definitely an okay pen in that respect. Uh, Zebra Blend, this one's fine. I could take it or leave it, even though I really like writing with this pen. Uh, this Roach Ring Tiki is a great writing pen. I have a gel refill on this one. So uh, I would just say that generally speaking, gel pens are a nice way to go. This one's a little bit too wet and a little bit too thick, but what happens there, let's see where that is, gel. The right gel will mean you don't need a lot of pressure because they're so smooth and it will or will not show through the paper depending on the ink formula and how much ink is putting out. So the right gel will do really well. It'll have almost no raise there. And it's just then it's just a function of how much that ink saturates the uh, paper. And again, the right gel could do a really great job. And this is a Premic gel, which I reviewed in the past. Traditional ballpoints, I would say, probably just throw out because they're gonna to require too much pressure to write with and then just not be a good fit. So in summary, not too big, not too much ink, not too pointy. Probably get like a Jetstream, High Tech C, Signo, maybe an Acro if you wanna hunt around. Those are kind of my top picks for writing with Moleskin, Moleskin notebooks. Thanks for watching.